Greetings, my friends, patriots, lovers of democracy, truth, and justice, believers in peace, freedom, and the American way. Tom Hartman here with you and super pleased to have with us to uh, open our show, Senator Bernie Sanders. Senator, welcome back to the program. Great to be with you, Tom. It, is, it has been... Uh, it's been too long. Too long. Well, it's not, I, I was, I, not only has it been too long, but it has been amazing to watch what you have been doing all over the country, going to these red states. I mean, it's just, I, I am so impressed. And we've been uh, regularly reporting on it. Our, our uh, you know, your fan base on this show just loves it. So, well, Tom, I, I, let me say a word on that. I am not a believer in red state, blue state. Uh, I believe that where you have working class people, uh, we have people struggling to keep their heads above water economically. Those are parts of the country that should be voting and fighting for progressive ideals. So when you go to a state like West Virginia, which is one of the poorest states in this country, or Kentucky, another very poor state, our job is to reach out to our brothers and sisters in those states and talk about what a progressive agenda means in terms of raising the minimum wage, in terms of health care, for all in terms of making public colleges and universities tuition free, these folks should be our allies. We've got to start reaching out to them, and that's what I'm trying to do. Well, and apropos of that, I understand Mitch McConnell is going to um, shorten the August vacation for for senators, and uh, that he's pushing forward with this uh, crazy Trump care bill. Uh, right. What do you, what's well, your take I, on all this? Uh, as to why he's doing that, my own guess is that the reason probably is he doesn't want to send his members home to have to defend this incredibly dangerous piece of legislation. This is legislation that has the support, according to the last national poll, of 12% of the American people. I myself don't understand how 12% could support it because it's such a terrible piece of legislation. This is a bill that throws 22 million people off of health insurance, raises premiums substantially for older workers, defunds planned parenthood, and cuts Medicaid by some $800 billion. And then, in the midst of it all, it gives $500 billion in tax breaks to the wealthiest 2%, to the pharmaceutical industry, to the insurance company, and to other major corporations. Nobody in America supports that. That's what they're pushing. We've got to defeat it. Now, why, why are they pushing this? Is this ideology, or is yeah. this the paymaster? What's going on here? It's, it's, it's two things. Number one, it's ideology. You know as well as anybody what the Koch brothers' agenda is. And we have to credit the Koch brothers for being reasonably honest. What they have done over the years is poured hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars into the political process around an ideology that says we want to get the government out of almost every sector of American life, maybe except the military. We don't believe, according to the Koch brothers, don't want to cut Medicare. They want to eliminate Medicare. They want to eliminate Medicaid. They want to eliminate Social Security. They don't believe in public education. That is their ideology. Now, they can't get it all, but this is a major step forward. When you cut $800 billion from Medicaid, that is a major step forward on the Koch brothers' uh, agenda. So that's number one. It is ideology. Number two, it is simply the very wealthy wanting more tax breaks. The rich are getting much richer, uh, but billionaires are not content. They want even more tax breaks. This would give them uh, several hundred billion dollars in tax breaks over a 10-year period. This week is also, uh, today, in fact, specifically a day of action. Uh, uh, big internet companies from, from Amazon to <laughs> one of the big porn sites, uh, oddly enough, are, are all protesting um, this attack on net neutrality, on the idea of the internet as a, as a utility like the phone company. Uh, instead, these uh, internet service providers want to be able to slice and dice it and say, "Oh, you want you want to get news with your package? That's an extra ten dollars a month, stuff like that." What what's what's happening in the Senate with regard to net neutrality? And what are your well, thoughts? Well, the difficulty on? now is that we have uh, an administration that does not support net neutrality. An administration, you know, one of the things, Tom, uh, all of the attention, or so much of the media attention goes to every absurd tweet that Trump sends out. We don't know what's coming today, what came two weeks ago, you know. And that's what media focuses on. The real truth about the Trump administration is that this is an administration in an unprecedented way that is out there defending the billionaire class and doing what the wealthy and large corporations want. And the big, powerful media interests do not like net neutrality. 
Uh, they want to make as much money as they can from the net. Uh, and uh, that's what they're trying to do. So I support all of those people who are trying to make sure that the Internet remains a democratic force in society, that if you're a small business, you're going to have the same type of opportunities as if you're a large corporation. If you're a small media group, you'll have the same opportunities as CNN or the New York Times. That is something that has got to be preserved. Yeah. And, and finally, I'm, I'm curious, the, the news cycle has been, your, your thoughts on this, the news cycle has been absolutely seized by uh, Donald Trump Jr. and his, um, his meetings with this Russian lawyer and all this other stuff. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on it? Well, you know, I think this is very serious stuff. Uh, I think we cannot underestimate uh, the threat and the efforts that Russia has made trying to undermine American democracy. Uh, obviously, as everybody knows, what the uh, intelligence committees in the House and the Senate, what Bob Mueller are looking at, is the very simple question of whether there was actual collusion between the Trump campaign uh, and uh, the Russians. Uh, yesterday, I think, brought forth some pretty damaging uh, information. But what we have to do, and this is, you can't be jumping the gun and you can't rush the judgment. There is a process that has to go on, uh, and I strongly support that process. The American people have got to be confident, no matter what their political points of view are. You like Trump, you don't like Trump, that this process is objective and fair, and that's what has to take place. Yeah, I think that uh, Don Jr. made it fairly clear that he was perfectly willing to collude with a foreign power, <laughs> um, uh, it, it, whether he did or not. But the, 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 I have been calling from the get-go for an independent commission to investigate this, to look into what happened specifically with regard to Russia, more generally with regard to things like if Russia can hack our voting machines, who else can and who else might have, yep, yep, all no, this kind of stuff. Real issues, real issues, Tom. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you and I have talked, but we talked about this five or six years ago. Yep. And I think people thought we were crazy about, you know, talking about paper ballots, for example, which is what they do in Canada. Uh, but uh, I think where we are right now is that I don't want to impede this. So we got an intelligence committee going in the Senate. You got one in the House. Hopefully, and I think they are in the Senate working in a bipartisan way. Uh, I think there are honest Republicans who are uh, legitimately concerned as you say, not only about the attacks uh, from Russia uh, on our election system, but the potential for what this breeds. I mean, what's going to happen next year? Uh, and, um, you know, that has got to take place. So you got Mueller doing his work at the House and the Senate Intelligence Committees. So I, I just hope this thing goes forward as, as uh, methodically and, and quickly as it can. Yeah, let's get some truth here. Yep. Senator Bernie Sanders, it's always a pleasure and an honor to have you with us, sir. Thank yeah. you so much for the great work you're doing. Thank you for, well, you keep for dropping work by. As well, Tom. Thank you very much. Take Thank care. you, Senator.